So I have before me two of the popular ZBooks, the ZBook Fury G8 and the ZBook Studio G8. Now there is a lot of features packed into both of these laptops and I'm not gonna get into them in this specific video, but hear me out. What I wanna focus on is the specific benchmark performance that we can achieve with these laptops and the usability of the laptops. So we're gonna cover all of those aspects. But there are fancy features like the MIL standard 810 military grade testing on these laptops. These laptops have security protocols, so you can make sure that you know nobody can access your laptop if you're on a you know secure system, whether you know it's a government contract or some super secret private business venture that you're doing and you don't want people to access your computer. There's a lot of features packed in these laptops. If you want to know about all those features, I will put links in the description below and you can check those out. Now, if you want me to talk about those features, comment below and let me know so I can cover that in a future video. For now, we're gonna do a head-to-head -head battle in regards of the usability and performance of these two laptops. First and foremost, though these two laptops share the ZBook name, they are not very similar. Let's start out with just simply the chassis design. And as you can see, the ZBook Studio is about a quarter to almost a half inch thinner than the Fury. Go ahead and pick them up, and you'll notice that the Studio is substantially lighter as well. Now, they both have 15.6 inch screens, but as you can see, as far as the chassis is concerned, the Studio is also about a half inch in width or depth or however you want to say it, um, then compared to the Fury. Okay, now let's talk about connectivity. As you pull the Fury up on its side panel and the Studio Book right there next to it, you can see that we have a network port on the Fury, two USB type A's, this security slot for your security card, headphone jack, and then we have a headphone jack, a vent, and a USB type A on the studio book. Flip both laptops over, and you can see that the studio does not come with a network port. However, it does come with two USB type C's, our power adapter, a display port, and an SD card slot. Now, as you can see, the two extra slots that the Fury comes with is the HDMI port and the network port. So we have the power adapter, two USB type C's, a display port, HDMI, and the SD card slot. So if ports and connectivity are what you are looking for, then the Fury is gonna be slightly better in that way. Now, in regards to the screen quality and brightness, here are those stats for you right now. If you're gonna be doing a lot of virtual meetings, then the webcam is important, and here's a quick sample of each of the webcams. Here is the webcam on the ZBook Studio. As you can see, grainy and a little bit off in the color. I look a little orange. Um, I guess I could maybe try and block some light and see if it you know, kind of auto-corrects, but it's, it's good. It's not, it's not great, though. Here is the webcam on the ZBook Fury G8. It's a little on the bright side, a little bit orange. Let's see if I block some of the light. Can, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not great. They'll do the job, but I really wish they would upgrade these cameras uh, in the future. And in regards to the speaker output of these two laptops, here's a quick audio sample as well. Now let's go ahead and open and close the lids real quick on these two laptops to see which one opens and closes smoother. <clears throat> it looks like the open and close with the one hand is gonna be easier on the Fury. It takes a little bit more to get that lid up. I almost have to like stop it with my hand before I can get the lid up on the Studio. Now let's check out the screen flex. Not a lot of screen flex on the Fury. And wow, pretty impressive there. Almost no screen flex. Actually. There is no screen flex. I can't even get the screen to flex on the studio. So as far as the build quality and the rigidity, it's a word, just go with it. I would lean towards the studio. It's got an all aluminum chassis on both of these laptops, but the aluminum and the build on the studio seems to be just slightly more refined. I'm really liking the studio so far. Now, as we spin them together to check out the keyboard deck and just the interior of the laptops, you can see we have a very different hinge configuration, trackpad, we even have the little cursor that you can move around here. 
uh, in the middle of the keyboard, and then also very different webcams. So as we saw those webcam samples earlier, the Fury actually has a manual sliding cutoff switch where the Studio does not. Now, as we're looking at the trackpad, if I were gonna pick a laptop off of trackpad alone, I love the glass trackpad on the Studio. It's very refined, very good quality. I think you have a good system over here with the buttons on the top and bottom, especially the extra middle button for functionality in specific programs. Um, but overall, for simple day-to-day -day use cases, I like the glass trackpad. Just feels nicer, it's quiet, just a really good experience. Now, in regards to the keyboard, you have basically the exact same keyboard and tactile feel, a nice soft key key press, a good snap back, and they're both about a low to medium key travel. Now let's do a quick audio sample of me typing on both of the keyboards and using the trackpad so you can hear how that sounds. Now, in regards to the performance benchmarks, we're going to see some varying results here. For specs, we have the i9-11950 V Pro CPU in both of the laptops. They both have 32 gigs of RAM, but where they differentiate most is going to be in the GPU. The Fury has the RTX A5000, which is a workstation GPU, and the Studio has the RTX 3070, which is a GeForce, more gaming-based GPU. So now as we're getting into the benchmarks, you can see in Autodesk 3ds Max that they're pretty much neck and neck. We see a 191 out of the Fury and a 183 out of the Studio. So not a big difference there. Really both models will be suitable for Autodesk 3ds Max. As we move to Autodesk Maya, same thing. You can see the Studio slightly climb ahead of the Fury 243 versus 238. And then in PTC Creo, we actually see the Studio pick up a little bit. Even though it's an RTX 3070, GeForce GPU, we do see it pick up quite a bit in PTC Creo and beat out the Fury. However, things take a massive swing when you look into SolidWorks, and that is where you're going to get the most benefit out of that workstation GPU, the A5000. Because in SolidWorks, it highly favors workstation certified GPUs, and that is what you're getting inside of the Fury. Now, keep in mind that if you go onto the HP website, you can absolutely upgrade the studio to that workstation GPU. However, when I made that upgrade, it bumped the cost of the laptop up to almost $9,000. So as these two laptops are configured on the HP website, the studio comes in at around $62 to $6,300, depending on the exact live pricing in the moment. You can check the description below if you wanna know about that live pricing. Over here with the Fury, you're sitting at around $7,200 to $7,300 for the configuration that you're seeing for the benchmarks on the screen. Now, like I said, if I upgrade the Studio to match the Fury, it's almost a $9,000 laptop, which to me is pretty crazy. It's that's, that's pretty expensive, and so you better have a really good reason to be using it. Now, I'm gonna contrast these two laptops against one of the Asus Workstation laptops, the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 16. So definitely check out that video. I'm gonna link it up here. If you're considering between these laptops and maybe the Asus Workstation laptop, could be a good video to help you out with your purchasing decision. Likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.